Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. So over the last couple of weeks, we have been seeing a major update uh, regarding this new world of finance brewing and when i'm when i say that i mean there's been a lot of these big discussions happening around digital assets settlements new payment systems and it's all pinpointing to one thing which is cbdc's right everyone is aware of cbdc's at this point in time we continue to see a lot of these big players lying to us and we're going to get into that um but regardless one thing that I want you all to realize right now is CBDCs are happening with or without our support. Why do I say that? Why do I know that? Well, it's because that's been their plan of action all along. And they've already had major moves in that direction already. And inch by inch, they will get their way. How do I know this as well? Well, it's very simple. Go back to what the Federal Reserve has been doing. Go back to what our government has been doing. They are trying to kill the fiat system. And they are doing it in a very successful way. So it's only a matter of time until those cracks get way too big to fix and the entire system collapses. And that's exactly what they want. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But regardless, I want to start off with this post here from Gold Telegraph that got posted on the 20th. And it was Russia has introduced digital assets into its legislation as a means of payment for international settlements. Follow the facts. Points are slowly starting to connect. And the reason why I bring this back up, because we did a full breakdown on Russia with bricks and all that. Well, Russia right now is being painted as an enemy. Very typical, right? Um, but regardless, they are being painted as an enemy. And the reason why they have to be painted as an enemy is because there's a big conflict happening around BRICS with the US. And we are starting to see the US dollar get completely avoided by a large portion of those nations. And the thing that we need is conflict, right? We need to create this conflict. We need to create problems and we need to make sure that everyone is reacting to them. And over the last couple of years, two years so far, right? Um, since we announced sanctions on Russia, conflict has been heightened. There's been nothing but problems. And everyone is looking at Russia because Russia is the enemy. But what everyone is failing to realize is that this has all been by plan, specifically even around the US. See, we can't sit by and let Russia announce this legislation behind digital assets and CBDCs because this is essentially legislation behind a CBDC. I know that it says digital assets and it's all payment settlements, but guess what? It's all still revolving around CBDCs. BRICS have been talking about CBDCs heavily as well. So the U.S. can't just sit by and say, hey, let's let's let uh, Russia launch their CBDC. No, we also need one. But I've also said this about BRICS, right? Back in the summer, and I'm bringing this post back up again. This was August of 2023. I put out a post regarding BRICS. Specifically, it was what South Africa's leader was saying. It was talking about how BRICS have reached an agreement on the expansion process. They were expanding rapidly. Um, and I said, you know, significant changes in motion. Too many are blinded by the false idea of de-dollarization and the downfall of the U.S. dollar and even the U.S. to see the real play at hand. We are seeing a complete realignment of our global financial system. Remember what the United Nations said back in 2019 when they were saying that they are pushing for a new global reserve regime based based on a supranational currency made up of a basket of developed nation currencies. All of this is also through digital assets and a new system. And this new system is on its way and it's dominated by digital utility assets. And I've been fully focused on this, but everyone is looking at this as the death of the US dollar. A new reserve currency is going to rise. But the problem is, is that we don't get a new fiat reserve currency. We're not going to get that. Why? Because the first one already failed. Why replace something that already failed with another failure? Remember, the BRICS nations, their reserve currencies or their currencies in general that would essentially become a reserve currency, they are all, all they are all failing as well. And it's because the fiat system 
is broken regardless of who is in charge of it. Meaning, whoever has their dominant currency be the reserve currency, it's still going to fail and it's still going to be a disaster. So what do we need? Well, we need a completely new financial system. And it's going to be based around gold, CBDCs, DLT, and digital assets. Now, when we think about this, right, what did we recently just get from the Federal Reserve? We got this. Big shout to 801 underscore XRP for this. We have Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. It's wrong to say that we're working on a CBDC in a secret lab and we're going to spring it on Congress at the right moment. No digital dollar in the making by the Federal Reserve Bank. But guess what? We know that this is a lie, just like they've been lying to us about the CPI data and inflation, just like they were lying to us about the banking liquidity being extremely strong back in 2023 when big banks started to go belly up. And also, guess what? Banks still are collapsing. Do I need to show you guys this article that just recently got written just the other day talking about why do regional banks keep failing? And this is talking about NYCB, which just recently struggled to regain momentum again. Most of these banks are still in a point of uh, time where liquidity is still constricted heavily. But the Federal Reserve won't come out and tell you that. No, they're going to keep lying to your face because they do not care about you or me. The same exact way that they don't care if you or me want a CBDC or not. But listen closely to this. To Congress that you are going to wait for approval before the Fed does anything, uh, launches anything. But folks like House Majority Whip Tom Emmer have said that the Fed is either actively researching or hiring personnel to study the implications of the CBDC. Can you give us any clarity on what the Fed is doing right now on a digital dollar? Sure. So I think we've been pretty transparent on this, but I will. Uh, I'll try harder. Um, so we. Uh, we are not getting ready to, we haven't proposed, we haven't come to a conclusion that we should propose or anything like that, a, that, that Congress consider legislation to authorize a digital dollar. And it would take legislation by Congress signed by the president to, to give us the ability to do the, what we think of as a CBDC, which is really a retail CBDC with, with the public of it. So, so we're just a long, long way from that. What we are doing, and I think what every major central bank is doing, is we're, we're trying to stay in the frontiers of what's going on in digital finance. And it has many, many different uh, areas. You know, it, it has applications in wholesale finance, in, in the payment system. And so we need, we, to serve the public, we need, we're, these, these issues have become very front burner in the last five or six years. We need to be knowledgeable about all that. So we, we actually do have people trying to understand things that are, but, but it's wrong to say that we're working on a CBDC and then we've got secretly got a lab here where we've got one and we're just going to spring it on Congress at the right moment. We don't. Not, I, I haven't at, at all in my own mind uh, made a decision that I think this is something the U.S. should be doing. Uh, I, you know, I just think it's something we need to be, we need to understand. And we do have people who are keeping up with that as part of the broader payments landscape. That's that's how I would characterize it. Mark. Now, when we hear this, it's it's great. It's like, oh, wow, they're not working on a CBDC. And this is what most people will believe, right? We'll get reports in the in the mainstream media on the headlines saying, hey, the Federal Reserve's not looking at a CBDC. That's great. Well, guess what? We know with Executive Order 14067, which, by the way, look at the date here. March 9th. Why am I looking at this and saying, hey, March 9th, 2022? That seems very interesting. Why is that interesting? Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's go back to my initial statements regarding BRICS and Russia and Russia being painted as the bad guy. Guys, look at when we announced sanctions against Russia. March 8th. One day later, we get Executive Order 14067, which is ensuring responsible development of digital assets, CBDCs are mentioned 34 times in this executive order. And when you come down here to the second mention, we have policy and actions related to United States central bank digital currencies. The policy of my administration on the United States CBDC is as follows. And here we have my administration places the highest urgency on research and development efforts into the potential design and deployment options of a United States CBDC. So right then and there, right, we get confirmation on an executive order 
to push and develop a CBDC for the U.S. While the Federal Reserve tells us, hey, we're not looking into this. We're not, you know, doing anything around a CBDC. Uh, guess what? This goes against that. We also have these efforts should include assessments of possible benefits and risk for consumers, investors and businesses, financial stability and systemic risk, payment systems, national security, the ability to exercise human rights, financial inclusion and equity, and the actions required to launch a United States CBDC if doing so is deemed to be in the national interest. And we do know that it is because guess what? We need to compete. Every single nation out there is pushing for a CBDC. We know this because we've been studying this and watching this over time. But guess what? We also know that the U.S. is now in proof of concept mode, ready to go to the next stage, which is pilot, then launch. But guess what is funny about all of this, right? So this was back in March. Like I said, this is March 9th, 2022. Over a year later, we start having major banking problems and banking liquidity is drying up. And guess what? We now have to print even more money and we're, we're pushing things into overdrive mode in terms of inflation. And guess what's funny about all of this? Months later, we get FedNow launching. And remember, this is new instant payment infrastructure developed by the Federal Reserve that allows eligible depository institutions of different sizes across the U.S. to provide instant payment services. Guess what FedNow is? It's a welcome mat for CBDCs. I've been addressing this since day one. And by the way, do I need to go back a little bit ago to March 13th where we got this from Congress? If you don't think the Fed is pursuing a CBDC, think again. The Fed gave this to my staff during a presentation earlier this Congress. They view a CBDC as one of their key duties and we can actually see currency, check collection, automated clearinghouse, ACH, wholesale payments, Fedwire funds uh, service, Fedwire uh, security service, fiscal agent of the US government and Fed now with CBDCs. Now again, like I said with FedNow, check this out from SmokeDog. Yes, FedNow sets the precedent for the issuance of a digital dollar, US CBDC. It's an inherently digital system with different or uh, di sorry, direct uh, settlement from the US Fed and a CBDC is a digitally native currency that would be issued by the Fed. FedNow equals Trojan horse for CBDCs. And within this, we actually get a great glimpse at what FedNow really is under the radar. We have a digital dollar is in line with the precedent sent by the FedNow initiative in that it provides real-time settlement to inherently digital and portable to, or sorry, tokenized cash without needing an intermediary to debit and credit accounts. And this is from the Fed themselves talking about how the FedNow service provides the infrastructure layer for a CBDC like this. And by the way, third parties can tap into this to provide liquidity, instant settlement, things like that. Ripple is a perfect uh, um, example of that. But when we really think about this, right, everything is in place for a CBDC. And you're telling me that in the last two years that all of this came to be? Absolutely not. The Federal Reserve, we know, is working on a CBDC. We know that they want a CBDC. And we know that... The entire issue with Russia and everything happening around Russia is only to accelerate this, considering the fact that one day after we announced sanctions, because we knew that this was going to cause issues on a global scale around the financial system, we get Executive Order 14067. I don't believe in coincidences. All of this was by plan. And then, again, the number one thing that I want to mention around all of this is the problems with the current financial system and all of the pressure put on it. It all aligns with accelerating and pushing this new system that is heavily dominated by CBDCs and backed by gold with DLT because that's exactly what we keep hearing even from the BRICS, even from the IMF. You go and look at the BIS documents, you could clearly see the mind map that they're trying to put out regarding a CBDC system. It doesn't incorporate gold, but we do know gold plays a vital role because all central banks are stockpiling massive amounts of gold at a time where 
it looks like major change is coming and it's historical amounts of gold as well. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.